So last week, I put out my quick, compact version of the traditional English joiner's bench, and the response has been huge. It is already one of my most popular videos ever. And a lot of people have gotten in touch to say, hey Rex, that's a great bench, but what kind of vice are you going to put on it? A leg vice, a moxin vice, a face vice? You know, it's not really going to be complete until there's a vice. And you know, my response to that is, well, what if we just didn't put a vice on? At all. I'm a vice guy. If I were going to cut a joint into this piece of wood, I'd put it in the vise, and then I'd just go to work on it with the saw. I use the vise for almost every woodworking operation. But what if I were starting over again, and I didn't have the money for a big, high-quality vise like this one? What would I do then? Well, I'd start by watching Mike Seamson's outstanding video on viceless work holding. Mike has an English bench that's very similar to mine. And he's built in some great work-holding devices. For instance, Mike built this long, adjustable stop into the middle of his bench, and this adjustable hook that slides in and out of the apron and holds boards perpendicular to the bench top. It all works really well. But I didn't build any of that stuff into my bench design. So if I want to use this bench without a vise, I'm going to have to adapt what's already here. Now, something that I do a lot of in my woodwork is just planing the faces of boards. And if I just take a board and put it flat on the bench top, it's already held pretty well. It's supported on its whole length, and it's held nice and flat. All I really need is something over here to keep the board from shooting off the end of the bench while I'm working on it. Historically, a lot of woodworkers did this with a planing stop, which can just be a block of wood. But even more commonly, woodworkers used a toothed metal stop that could really bite into the work. And just recently, the guys at Benchcrafted came out with this slick little job, which holds like crazy and costs only 30 bucks. You should totally just buy the Benchcrafted version if you have the money. I have no affiliation with them and I get nothing if you buy it, but I still think you should. Of course, this is me, so I'm also going to show you how to build your own with about 10 bucks worth of spare parts from the big box store. We'll start with half of this six inch strap hinge. What did I do with the other half? I used it to make this toy cake server, which my daughter uses to serve this toy cake. She's six. We have a lot of tea parties. With the hinge clamped to my bench top, I can hacksaw off the parts I don't need and get a square edge. For cleaning up, I like this Nicholson handy file. It's got a built-in handle and two different sets of teeth. I'll put a link to it down in the description with everything else from this build. Now I've got my piece clamped upright to the apron, and I'm hacksawing a little notch every quarter inch. Those notches give me a starting place for filing the teeth. These Tecton triangular files aren't super high quality, but they are cheap, and they come with a comfortable plastic handle. I'm removing a lot of material here, and any file I use is gonna get pretty worn out. I like to use an inexpensive file for this kind of coarse work. You can just file straight down, deepening your notches until you get nice triangular teeth. It only takes about 20 minutes. Then it's back to the flat file to bevel the underside of my teeth. This feature forces the work down to the bench top while it's being planed, and it gives the teeth more bite. I also need to countersink the holes in my hinge so my mounting screws sit flush. I can use a countersink bit in my brace or in a drill, which is a lot faster. Now my hardware won't catch my tools as I'm working. For the post of my stop, I'm using this piece of cherry, but any hardwood will do. I'll trace the holes and use a square to run their locations down the side. Then I'll drill in from the side and down from the top, which is a lot easier if you hold the brace horizontally and lean into it with your belly for extra drilling force. Drilling the end grain of hardwood is difficult and you need all the help you can get. To mount my planing stop to my post, I'm gonna use these little barrel nuts right here. You find these in cheap hardware, and you can also grab them down at the big box store. They're very inexpensive. And these go sideways into the post, and then my mounting screws come in from on top and screw into them this way. It locks everything together. The end grain of the post is kind of soft, even in hardwood. End grain just doesn't hold a fastener very well. This arrangement is going to give me a rock-solid hold. With my holes drilled, I can drop in my barrel nuts. Then I thread my screws into the barrel nuts, and my stop is done. If you want to build this stop, I have all my viceless work holding solutions in a single, affordable set of plans, and there's a link to those down in the description. 
Historically, these stops were mortised into the bench top, but my joiner's bench is kind of small, and I don't really have the real estate for that approach. Luckily, I've worked out a mounting method that's going to work perfectly with this bench. First, I'll pull the closest board off the bench top and saw out a notch that fits the post of my stop. Then I'll drill some closely spaced mounting holes in the post and clear out the waste between them with a chisel. The post can then be lag bolted to the leg of the bench and come right up through that notch in the top. Now, this mounting method works, but I was hoping that the lag bolts would slide in those slots. Instead, they're just bending, and I don't have much range of motion. So I made this little hardwood spacer that I can add between the washers and the post. That spacer keeps the bolts from bending and allows them to slide more easily. Now I have the full range of motion on my stop, and I'm not stressing my hardware every time I adjust it. You might see the planing stop and think that it's going to be difficult to use or have a steep learning curve, but right now, you're watching footage of me using a stop for the second time in my life, and it's a piece of cake. You can give your stock a little mallet tap to help the teeth bite down, and it's a very efficient method of stock prep. If you need to flip the board or rotate it, it's easy because the work isn't held down. If you're doing a stack of boards, this method will be especially quick. And you can see, my final surface is perfect. Now the planing stop can handle a lot of tasks. It will let you work on the faces and edges of medium-sized boards, especially for planing. But what about chiseling? For that, we're going to need a bit more hardware. This is called a holdfast. You've probably seen them before, but they're basically a clamp that fits into a hole in your bench top. You hit them on top to seat them, and then you hit them on the back to make them release. With a holdfast, I can quickly clamp any piece of stock down to my bench top and chisel any part of it. The ones I have here are made by Gramercy Toolworks. They cost $38 for a set of two, and you just can't beat them for the price. I don't get anything when you buy these, and I still recommend them very highly. Your holdfasts can also work with your planing stop. For instance, you often need to plane work across the face instead of along it, especially for heavy stock removal. The planing stop by itself won't let you do this, but you can combine the planing stop with a doze foot which is just a thin piece of wood with a right angle cut out of the end. When I combine my planing stop with the doe's foot on the opposite corner, my stock is held very securely, and it's easy to work across the grain, even with really aggressive strokes. Another place where your planing stop needs help is with very wide stock. The stop is too narrow for big planks, but this is no problem. I can just put a batten against my planing stop, hold the far end with a hold fast, and then plain wood that's as wide as my bench top. Now I know what you're saying. Rex, those holdfasts are great, but they're uh, not quite in the budget right this second. And I still want to use that batten trick for planing wide boards. Don't you have some little gizmo that I could make out of random junk for basically no money? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. You'll need a scrap of dowel, a little piece of pipe, a screw, and a big washer. I had all this stuff laying around my shop, and the copper pipe just came out of the garbage. I'll tape around the dowel to give myself a line, saw a little shoulder all the way around, and then pair down to my shoulder with a sharp chisel. I've got a tight fit, and I can bang on a piece of copper pipe, which is going to keep the dowel from splitting when I drill the end and add my screw and washer. I'll drill a big countersink in my bench, and then drill a 7 eighths hole for my dowel. My new stop sits under the bench top, where it won't scratch my work. I can tap the stop up, slide my batten underneath it, and then tap it down to trap the batten under the washer. Now I can still plane really wide boards, even without a holdfast. And there are some other places where the planing stop won't do everything. It does the edges of narrow boards, but for edge planing wide boards, there isn't enough support to keep things balanced. To fix this problem, we need a crochet. It's just a hook made out of hardwood. I made this one entirely with hand tools, and I have all the details in my low bench series. I'll link to that in the description and the cards. You can see that the end is drilled and there are washers in the holes. This crochet is easy to just bolt to the leg of my bench. And I'll also drill some holes in my apron, and these will hold pegs or holdfasts to support work in the crochet. My crochet has a long, narrow taper, and it really grips the ends of boards while the pegs support the weight, and the board is held really nicely for edge planing. No vice necessary. At this point, we've done most operations except for sawing. I prefer to saw on my low bench. It's a lot easier and more ergonomic, but you can easily use a holdfast to grip a board while you crosscut or rip it. 
Just hang the board over the edge of the bench. But what about sawing joinery? I mean, that's the very first thing I did in this video. Can I work on the ends of boards effectively with this bench? Sure I can. For a narrow board, I'll use a pair of holdfasts in the apron of my bench. Grip the stock high and low, and you'll have a great hold for sawing joinery. For a wide board, jam it in the crochet and add a holdfast. Then you can cut dovetails or anything else you want. So ever since I came out with this design, people have been getting in touch and saying, Rex, I like your bench a lot, but I'm worried about that top. Isn't that thin planking gonna be too little to really grip a holdfast? And I was a little concerned about that too, but I shouldn't have been. Here's a piece of the planking that I used for the top, and I've put in a hold fast, and it's holding beautifully. Turns out, an inch and a half of material is plenty with these Gramercy hold fasts, but that's not the whole story. The hold fasts are gripped okay by the top, but the holes are already starting to become distorted. When you use a hold fast with a thin top like this, it grips okay, but the angle is too much, and it's crushing a lot of those fibers in there. What we need to do is make this top a little bit thicker just where the holdfasts are. Luckily, I've got plenty of this material left over from building the bench. So I'm gonna pull off a couple of boards, glue on small pieces of blocking right underneath the holes that I've already drilled, replace the boards, drill all the way through those blocks with my bit and brace, and then I can pound in a holdfast and not only will it hold really securely, but the holes aren't breaking down at all. I expect to be able to use this top with the holdfast for years. You know, it's really common for people to get a hold of me and say, Hey Rex, I found this little woodworking vise on Amazon. It's cheap and it gets great reviews. Do you think I should get one? And honestly, I don't. Small vices are just not very useful for woodworking. They won't handle big stock, they won't handle long stock, and they're not very good at holding boards perpendicular so that you can cut joinery on the ends. I am all about cheap tools, but when you're doing woodwork, if you have the choice between a cheap vise and no vise, you're honestly better off with no vise. Especially when you think about the cost of adding just a couple of viceless options to your bench. You can get a pair of holdfasts and then build a planing stop and a crochet and a couple other things, and your whole cost for all of that stuff is gonna be $50, $55. That brings the total cost for this bench with all of these appliances up to about 150 bucks. And that's just not a lot of money for a bench that will handle pretty much any woodworking operation. And if you wanna add these things to your bench, I have a really great set of plants with everything in it. It's got the crochet, the planing stop, it's got the batten stop, it's got the locations for all of my hold fast holes and all the places that I added blocking. And that set of plans is only five bucks. If you wanna pick that up, go on over to rexkruger.com store or click the link down in the description. And of course, my patrons never have to worry about how much plans cost because they get all of my plans for free. They also get early access to all of my videos, exclusive content, and a bunch of other extras. If you'd like to see about the rewards that I offer for the people who make this channel possible, go over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out all the things I do for the supporters of this channel. None of this could happen without them. In making a video like this, it's inevitable. People are gonna ask me, hey, do you like working on a viceless bench? And the answer is, not really. I think viceless benches are great if you're broke or if you're trying to recreate a particular period in woodworking history. But for regular day-to-day -day projects, nothing beats the ease and convenience and solid hold of a good vice. I think that's why they're so popular. Now, I'm not gonna change anything that I've done to this bench. I'm gonna leave on the planing stop and I'm gonna keep using holdfasts. I'm just gonna take off the crochet. And in its place, I am going to build a big, robust vise. And I'm gonna make it out of common materials off the internet and from the home center. And it's going to be fantastic. And I can say that even though I haven't built it yet and I only have sort of a vague idea of what it's gonna look like. But I still think it's gonna be awesome. So you should come back and join me next week as I put the finishing touches on our completed joiner's bench. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week.